Hey everybody, it's Allison Haikila. Thanks so much for joining me today. I've got a gel press video to share. I'm going to start off with my 5x7 gel press plate and I have the Tiffany stencil from Chow Bella that I've applied. I just pushed it down with my 6 inch brayer and now I'm going in with teal golden acrylic. This is a beautiful color and it's nice and solid. I'm starting off with this one because this is going to be my main layer once the gel press print is done. We've got to let that dry completely before we move on to the next part. And I just want to mention, oh, I've got Hansa Yellow Golden Acrylic now that I'm going to apply next. This, the orientation of this video is vertical because I had originally planned on making this a YouTube short as opposed to a full length video, but Things were taking a little bit longer than I had wanted for a short, and I loved them so much I thought it would be better to just expand it into a full video. So I hope that you enjoy watching this. Now I have the Carabelle Studio Art Printing Plate. Um, I'm not even going to try to say it because the name is in French, but I'll have it listed in the description box below. I don't think that this one is available anymore, but you can use any type of texture plate that you have. Um, you can use rubber stamps, whatever you like. So I'm just applying it randomly and kind of haphazardly all across the plate there. And now I'm checking it. You can see that I like to apply my plates to an acrylic block. This is a really thin acrylic block from Stampendous. And it allows me to be able to, you know, lift it up, take a look at what's going on. And, you know, if I need to apply it directly to my paper instead of putting my paper onto it. I can do that like if in the case of lining things up and whatnot, I can do that easily. Here I had just applied some bubble wrap, one of my favorite things to use on my gel press plate, and some corrugated cardboard which is another favorite. I love using recycled materials to add texture and areas of interest to my plate. Now I have Pyrrol Orange Golden Acrylic. This is a really vibrant orange. It's so bright. I love it. And it's going to really pop with that teal that we used at the very beginning. I'm applying it to the entire back in a nice thin coat. And this is what we're going to use to pull our print. I've got some nice copy paper. It's not cardstock. It's just copy paper. It is a nice brand. Um, it's nice and bright white, so it keeps the colors true. And I will have that as well as everything else listed in the description box. And now I'm pulling that print. Oh, look at how delicious it looks already. It's so pretty. I love these colors together. Isn't that fun? And that's the start of our card. I'm loving it. Take a look at the areas of interest that I'm going to point out right here. Look at that. So pretty. It's not really pretty. Pretty is the wrong word. It's cool. It's funky. <laughs> I've got the Steampunk Alchemist stamp set from All In Create, and I'm using that middle light bulb there. I love this stamp set. I love it so much. And I've got a really old gel press print. I think I used acrylic paints on here, maybe some inks. I don't know. Not positive because it's old, but it's great to use up these little guys. Um, I often make a lot of three by five gel press prints, and then... You know, they just kind of hang out until I need them for something like this. And this is perfect. So I'm using the Gina K Designs Amalgam Ink for the light bulb. And I'm applying it a couple of times. I really need to get the reinker for my Amalgam Ink. It's getting pretty dry. But I love this ink because you can use it with a variety of mediums. You can use it with Copic markers or other alcohol markers. You can use it with watercolors. You can use it with pencils and it works beautifully. I heat set it because I do believe that there is some acrylic paint on this gel press print. So I wanted to make sure that it was really dry before I went in with my Copic markers, especially because I'm using yellow and we didn't want to dirty anything up. So I'm just adding a little bit of, I don't know, extra stuff. I'm zhuzhing it up with these markers. Um, I've got YR23 and YR15 just to add a little bit of depth, a little bit more interest, make that bulb look more bulbous, as it were. And now I've got my white Signo gel pen just to add a bit of highlight. I think it's really fun to take prints that may not be your favorite because like this one, I didn't love it. It was kind of cool. It had some neat areas. I really like the colors. But by stamping on it and then cutting it out, 
you now have transformed that print into something really cool. Look at how nice that looks with those white highlights. It really makes it look like glass, even on top of the, the inked area at the top where you screw the bulb in. I think that looks really neat. So this is a fun way to, to use some prints that may not be your favorite or have some spots that you really like as opposed to others. This print was fine. I was thinking about adding more layers to it, but instead it worked out perfectly for the light bulb. And now I fussy cut that whole thing. Didn't want to make you watch all of that. And now I have my original print. I've got this piece of cardboard that I had cut out so that it shows the interior of a card front. It's the interior piece is cut to four by five and a quarter, which is usually what my panel is because I use A2 card bases. And that helps me to figure out my placement so that I know exactly where I want to cut my panel. I have the Rays stencil from Tim Holtz. This is another well-loved piece of paper crafting goodness that I have in my craft room. I use this a lot. I like how it's kind of messy. They're not perfect rays. The ends are kind of wonky. There's little bits here and there. It's just fun. It works really well with the, the light bulbs from the Steampunk Alchemist stamp set that I use oh so often. I have some translucent embossing paste from Dreamweaver and quinacridone nickel azo gold uh, golden fluid acrylic as well. I like using translucent powder when I'm mixing paint into it um, because the, the trans, did I say powder? I might have said powder. I like using translucent paste because it doesn't lighten things up the way a white paste would. You might get the color to shift a little bit, but all in all, it's going to remain true. And this wasn't quite working for me. It wasn't yellow enough. So I'm adding some iridescent gold deep. This, again, I was trying to go for something translucent. I didn't want to alter my colors and the gold has more opacity than I really wanted, but in the end it looks really cool. So I'm going to use my palette knife to apply it. And I'm not applying the paste the way I normally do. Usually I, I take my time and I, I add a clump at the top and drag it down at a 45 degree angle and I make everything oh so perfect. But with this, I didn't mind having some texture and wonkiness. So I'm just kind of going in and making a beautiful mess <laughs> with this paste. But again, it, it works out perfectly and I just so happen to mix the right amount. When does that ever happen? I got pretty lucky there. So here you can see that I'm trying to be careful because some of those areas are really skinny. Uh, they'll probably break off at some point when I use this again, but that's okay because the integrity of the stencil is still is still wonderful. So I'm just smoothing this out a little bit more and it's just a fun stencil, right? I think it's really cool. So I'm gonna lift this off. Make sure that you put this right into some water, either take it to a sink. I keep a basin in my craft room um, with about two inches of water in it so that I can just stick my stencils right into there so that they can soak. It makes things much easier when I'm going to clean them off later. You don't want the paste to dry on your stencil. I have a pit pen in a brush tip from Faber Castell and I'm going around the edge of my light bulb. I, I do this every time that I have something that I've fussy cut. Um, unless there's a white border around it, I always like to use this pit pen to go around those edges and just give it a more finished and complete look. It doesn't take long at all and it, it really makes a big difference. Look at how shiny. You see, it lost some of its translucency, but it maintained its color, which is what I was going for. If we would have used white, it would have paled out quite a bit, and I did not want to do that. I have some Barely Arts glue now, and I'm just going to apply my fabulous light bulb, and then I'm going to use a SIPA pen. SIPA, SIPA, I'm not really sure. It's Japanese. <laughs> You can use any pen. I could have used the pit pen again, um, but I wanted a really fine point. I'm just using my little ruler here so that I can have the wire for my bulb coming from the top. When I haven't put a, a, a wire there or some type of line for the bulb, it's always bothered me and I've had to go back and add them. So if you're doing this, I highly recommend adding a little wire as opposed to having your light bulb floating. I tend to not leave my card bases white. I like adding extra color. So I grabbed some Peacock Feathers Distress Ink and I'm applying that with a blending brush all around the edges. 
And this color looks perfect with that teal paint that we used in the very beginning of this video for our first layer on our main gel print. It's such a beautiful color. It's definitely one of my favorites, but I decided that I wanted it to be a little bit, a little bit more intense. I needed to add a little bit more to it. So I grabbed prize ribbon distress ink. Peacock feathers looks great there. Here's me with my little swatches. You can see what colors I'm missing. I need to get prize ribbon in distress oxide. I need to get chip sapphire in distress oxide. But for now, prize ribbon distress ink is just what I needed to add a little bit more depth to that color. I'm not covering up the peacock feathers completely. I'm not even blending it perfectly because we've got a gel press print and it's nice and messy and grungy. So I didn't want it to be a perfect blend. I have the Noteworthy stamp set now. This is another favorite of mine. I'm using a lot of favorites for this, this card today. I use this, this, uh, excuse me, this stamp set quite a bit for my sentiments. It's got really great ones in there. I am stamping the Shine Brightly because it's so appropriate with this card that we've made with Twilight Versifying Claire ink. This is my favorite ink to use for sentiments. It's nice and crisp. Everything looks beautiful. The colors are really great. And now I'm deciding where I'm going to put that. But we're not going to leave it white because there's really no reason to because we've got lots of ink colors, so we may as well add some more. I grabbed a blending brush with uh, yellow residual ink on it, but it really wasn't enough. So now I have Wild Honey Distress Ink. And one of my favorite things about felt ink pads is the texture. I mean, you can tell because I love gel press printing so much that I love texture. So using the texture from a felt pad uh, that's dandelion memento ink. This is also a felt pad. It adds so much without any work, right? When you when you get a, a good close up of the uh, the finished card, you'll see. But it looks really cool, and it's just because of the way you're lightly pressing your sentiment or image or whatever it is into that felt pad. It's just capturing not only the ink but that fantastic texture. So you don't wanna to press too hard. You just wanna lightly kiss the surface and then you can get some really great effects. Back with the Barely Arts glue, applying my panel to that card base. This card is almost done, you guys. I hope that you've enjoyed making this with me. I love how this came out. Those colors are so vibrant. And I really like the sentiment. I like all the texture and those prints together are just really cool. I hope that you've enjoyed this, like I said. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I will be back very soon with another video. Be well, stay safe, peace out.